I've been involved in interfaith work, um, first of all for the Scottish Interfaith Council and now um, Interfaith Scotland for it's probably about 12 years now and I just think it's fantastic work, really important for Scotland. Uh, it makes Scotland a place where people of all faiths feel really welcome and um, it's important work. We know we work with women, faith communities, young people, Scottish government and uh, it's, it, it really does ensure that Scotland's a welcoming and inclusive country. So. Uh, today this is actually Scottish Interfaith Week and tonight here in Kirkcaldy we're actually celebrating the fact it's Scottish Interfaith Week. Um, there are 60 events all over Scotland right from Shetland to Dumfries and west and east uh, literally all over Scotland and so tonight is kind of it's not quite midweek but it's nearly midweek and we're celebrating we're celebrating the fact that this is Scottish Interfaith Week and so we've people here from civic society lots of different religious traditions um, I think Fife Interfaith uh, Forum which has really helped uh, make this possible so it's, uh, it's great to be here tonight. And I work for Interfaith Scotland I'm doing the newsletters and Interfaith movements are a wonderfully forward-looking and important part of our uh, cultural dialogue at the moment. It's uh, a way of imagining how we can be more integrated together, more respectful, more aware of uh, each other's beliefs and activities, and uh, that's the only way forward uh, for a harmonious world. It's a great chance to see uh, the different faith groups and uh, get to know them a little better and to celebrate uh, all of our endeavors. Scotland is in a process of revisioning itself and stepping forward in the world and um, this process of respecting others maximally and being maximally inclusive seems to be something that it's embracing in this time and it's wonderful to see. It's a very forward-looking uh, uh, and uh, very uh, 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 w winning kind of formula for moving forward in the world. Very mature. Hi, my name is Claire Baker. I'm a member of the Scottish Parliament for Mid Scotland and Fife. And Interfaith Week is um, so important in terms of bringing together people of all different faiths to work together and think how can we um, improve Scotland and make the lives of people in Scotland better and strengthen um, people's faiths. Uh, I'm here tonight, as it really is a pleasure to have um, the week being launched in Kirkcaldy. Uh, I'm a Fife MSP with my office in Kirkcaldy and I'm just really pleased that I know it goes around the country every year and I'm really pleased the decisions come to be in Kirkcaldy because we have a good story to tell in Fife in terms of the way our different churches and faiths are working positively together so it really is a pleasure to be here. And I think you know they play such, the faith groups play such an important role in Scotland um, in terms of building communities and strengthening communities and often the faith leaders and churches can be uh, real leaders and communicators within their communities and to have an interfaith group gives an opportunity for people to come together from different religions to work positively and um, empower and, and grow their communities in a positive manner. Hi, I'm Mohammed and I'm originally from Somalia. I live in Glasgow and I'm happy to be here. Interfaith Scotland means a lot. I mean, it means interaction, it means communication, it means dialogue and uh, how, how can people come together and solve problems? So there are many problems in our world uh, and uh, hopefully we can find solutions together. Whether Scotland uh, will be an independent country or remains uh, within the United Kingdom, it will be important to know what are the values and visions for Scotland. Uh, well, I've been uh, involved in Interfaith Scotland for many years now. Uh, first as a volunteer all the way back in 2004 when I was invited along to uh, a youth retreat on the island of Holy Isle. I wasn't sure what Interfaith was at that time and I was a little bit nervous about uh, going along, but um, I met the most wonderful young people from all different religions and backgrounds and uh, all wanting to make a difference to, to Scotland and uh, the kind of place that we want to live and make it that kind of place. So um, that really got me hooked interested about how faith and society link together and uh, in wanting to improve a situation for people who are less fortunate than ourselves as well. Uh, well, I'm actually been uh, organising the event this evening and bringing together the speakers and, and the music and the dance and uh, um, getting uh, together as part of our celebration for Interfaith Week. So we have a national event every year um, and today it's in Kirkcaldy, we chose Fife as a, a region to have our national event. In. 
Uh, I think interfaith dialogue is very important along with other things in order to create um, better peace in the world. Interfaith dialogue is used in different countries around the world where there's um, divisions and, and fighting between different uh, ethnic groups, different tribal groups, um, people from different sections of society. So it's a way of trying to bring people together using uh, faith uh, and belief as a tool to think about what our common values are, what do we share um, and how those values can be used to improve society. Uh, this, uh, I think, is a platform where all the uh, people belonging to the various religions who are living in Scotland can uh, come and uh, you know, express their religious belief practices and exchange views and this way they can understand each other better. This, this year and the next year are going to be very uh, crucial for the culture, economy and everything that is Scottish and uh, Scottish heritage about being very open to whoever comes from anywhere in the world is very important and Interfaith Scotland is that face of Scotland which shows to the world that it's a very open place really from the viewpoint of religion as well as culturally, economically. I'm very uh, delighted that uh, the Interfaith Scotland has uh, been so um, successful in making such a good program so, uh, where so many people have come and I wish it a success. Thank you. Well, the year I was moderator was 2002, just after 9-11, and I became involved with others in setting up the church leaders meeting because I think that event, 9-11 particularly, really brought home to us the need for people of faith to really be part of the solution, not part of the problem in terms of the world's troubles and difficulties. Well, I'm, one reason I'm here tonight is to launch a book I've just brought out uh, called Luke, Paul and the Mosque. Luke Paul is the name I've given to a fictional minister who develops a friendship with an imam and he and his congregation develop links with the local mosque. Uh, this doesn't please everyone in his congregation, but it is a way of enlarging their understanding of other faiths, which I think is very important. Well, I think everything is very important to Scotland just at the moment. And, um, you know, just today we've had the launch of the white paper in relation to Scottish independence. We may be Jews, Baha'is, Christians, Muslims from different faith groups, but at one level we're all Scots and the future of Scotland is in all our hands and we need to work together to make it work for Scotland. I personally had a great enrichment out of the many interfaith friends I've made over the years in my involvement with what was initially the Interfaith Council and is now Interfaith Scotland. It goes without saying today, the white paper wasn't it released on um, the possibility of Scotland becoming independent. But my, my thinking is that whether we get independence or whether we don't, we want Scotland to be a place that celebrates diversity, that recognises that whether you have a faith or whether you don't, it's a place where you'd want to live where there's justice, there's equity, there's fairness for all. Um, so yes, it's a significant night tonight actually. It's kind of the, the white paper on uh, and the possibility of Scotland's independence was, um, was released today by Alex Salmond. Um, but it's more significant to think about what kind of Scotland do we want to inhabit, whether we get independence or whether we don't. And the, the, over the last year, the faith communities of Scotland have been engaging in that discussion really, what's the role of religion in Scottish society, the place of religion, um, what are the values that we'd, we'd like to offer to Scottish society as people of faith. So it's been an interesting build up to, 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 to now, but then of course it's just the start of uh, a very long and complex process really. You know, religion is very much a part of people's identity. You know, whether you're a Muslim, a Sikh, a Hindu, a Baha'i, a Buddhist or a Christian, um, it goes right to the core of who you are and so it's really important that that, um, that sense of identity is brought into the public sphere in Scotland and it does make Scotland um, almost a unique country because of the welcoming approach that's taken towards um, people from all different backgrounds. Um, so there's something about faith and identity, something about the contribution that faith communities can make to the good of Scotland 
um, that I think is very important and probably very important at this unique time in Scotland's sort of history and development. So, thank you. My name is Maureen Sire and I'm going to be your MC for this evening. I'm Director of Interfaith Scotland and can I also personally say it's a real delight to be here with all of you and to see so many faith communities and representatives of civic society here with us this evening. It now gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Sister Isabel Smythe um, who's going to speak to us about values and visions in a modern Scotland. I think that when we were planning this event we did not think that the white paper would be published today so it's a very significant moment really about visions for for Scotland and the first minister today suggested that he wanted us all to engage in a conversation about the kind of Scotland that we wanted to live in. Well we in Interfaith Scotland have been doing that for the past year it's been the focus of all our dialogues and our conversations. And when I come to think really about this opportunity, I think what a unique moment it is in our history, really. I cannot think of and don't know if there is another small country that has been able to think about its future and the values uh, you know, with which it wants to live in peacetime very often countries have had to think about these things in the aftermath of war and of conflict. Well, when I think about the kind of values and the vision for Scotland, I think that we can do no better than live up to those values on the Scottish mace. Donald Dewar at the inauguration or whatever of the Scottish Parliament said that these were the values in which the new Scotland was to be based. I think if we lived integrity, the kind of integrity that would mean honesty and transparency in our public, religious, private and voluntary institutions. A wisdom that would ensure a listening ear and a discerning spirit so that greed, self-interest, power will not dictate its actions. But all of Scotland's citizens and all who live within its borders will seek the common good. Seek that which allows human flourishing of all. Remembering that human rights are important, but so too are human responsibilities. Justice that will work to give everyone a living wage. Make sure all can live in safety and that the homeless, the marginalized, the poor, the stranger are looked after. Compassion that will help us realize that we are all brothers and sisters. We are all interrelated members of one human family. Citizens of a world that cries out for healing, wholeness and peace. I would want a Scotland characterised by hospitality, which welcomes the stranger, rejoices in diversity and reaches out in friendship and support to other countries and other nations. I would want a, a Scotland with a sense of the sacred. And what do I mean by that? That we reverence and respect the earth in which we walk and all those who are our companions on the way, recognizing their inner worth and value. Is this too idealistic, I wonder? Well, not for people like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, 
Nelson Mandela, Aung San Suu Kyi, who have become icons of the best of human nature. We live in a fractured world and a fractured society because we are fractured human beings. But each one of us, in our own little way, can contribute to the flourishing of our nation. Here this evening, we take such a small step. The work of interfaith relations is such a small step. This week, as you know, many events will be taking place that will bring people of different faiths and people of no faith together. These events may seem small, but have no doubt about it. They are a contribution to the well-being and flourishing of our nation. Thank you. Now in the programme, we have Jo Brady, who's the Head of Integration Services at the Scottish Refugee Council. Um, jo joined the Scottish Refugee Council in the year 2000, when he worked with people seeking asylum from the outset of the UK government's dispersal programme. But on a serious note, Scottish Refugee Council is delighted to be here at the formal celebration of um, Scottish Interfaith Week. Uh, Interfaith Scotland is one of our main strategic partners and recognised by the Scottish Government as so. And we feel that the opportunities to work together with communities to explore issues regarding faith as well as um, belonging are incredibly important and a privilege. For myself, I think in this time, these kind of global times where everything's changing, as I've said, the world's on a, a doorstep, it's really important how we show other people a welcome. We think it's really important um, to ask ourselves this question today, especially. As has been mentioned, the white paper on the referendum lays down the case for Scotland to decide its future. We've published a report on that, during which we don't take any sides whatsoever. But regardless of the nature of 19th of September 2014 onwards, we feel that things will change. We feel that our work in Interfaith Scotland and this week can help Scotland answer the most important question. And that's not one that's answered as easy by saying I or no on the 18th of September, but requires us to be creative and imagine. And that question is, what kind of country do you want Scotland to be? Thank you. Uh, please get involved in interfaith dialogue wherever you are in Scotland or the wider world. Um, find out if there's a local interfaith group or national interfaith organisation where you are and you'll find that there's something to be gained from dialogue with others. And you know, all the faith traditions have got deep spiritual wisdoms and it's, it's quite exciting to engage with them at a level where you're actually talking to and engaging with adherents of those faith traditions. Um, yeah, just get involved, enjoy the wisdom and enjoy the dialogue.